Hello everybody. It's that time of day again. All of a sudden it got dark. I'm running a little late because I had to reboot my phone because the screen wouldn't turn the proper way. And then I got sat down and realized it got dark outside. So I needed to turn some lights on. So it's kind of funny. Anyway, it's uh, I'm I'm getting a lot of things done. Uh, the dog has been running. She got out the basement door while Robert was doing some last minute updates on the truck, so we could leave. And this morning, I thought I'd made you just the cutest little video of how wonderful the silver rags are, or the purple rags, or whichever one you decide to use. And I didn't hit the video button. <laughs> I was getting gunk off the off the truck from where I'd run through the car wash twice yesterday. So, oh well, stuff happens. But Robert got, um, he rain axed my windshield just in case we're on the road with a lot of rain tomorrow. And we are good to go. It's kind of, kind of strange getting ready to go on a trip without Michelle with me. And I'm having a hard time with that. But, um... Other than that, I'm doing doing well. Um, so we are uh, getting ready. So I wanted to show you my handy dandy little little control journal, and this really is uh, it's just a four by six photo album, and I have taken colored note cards and put in it so that um, I can see my morning and afternoon I have an office control journal and I have an a morning a regular house morning routine so I have a uh, things I have to get done in the morning with fly lady and my nose is itching so uh, I hope nobody comes to the door right now because there's nobody here to answer anyway so I've got an afternoon office routine, things that I do, and then um, <clears throat> the evening routine for the house and for me. And and this just and I've got my basic week. I've got how I do my weekly home blessing hour, and it's divided by the days of the week. So I do one thing a day, so it keeps my house looking good. Today, uh, today's Thursday. The trash runs on Thursday, so. We gathered up all the trash and we got it out. And then in the back of my little control journal is what I call my travel control journal. Yep, I have a travel control journal. And my travel control journal takes on all aspects of the traveling. <clears throat> so I have to make sure I have certain things in my purse. And I have to make sure I have um, backup medicine stuff. You know, you never know when you're going to need something. So I have a bag for that. My sister calls me the bag lady because I have a bag for everything. I have a, a, a pink bag over there that stays in the car that has everything I need right there at my hand. I have um, a computer bag, which I don't think I'm going to take this time because we're only going to be gone like a, two days. Not even two days and I don't think I'll need it because I'm not setting up shop in a hotel room like I usually have to do for conferences that last four or five days so I'm just taking the basics my toiletries my makeup my little stash bag that I have right beside my bed that has everything flashlight everything I could possibly need that's that goes beside the bed uh, I have my blankie and my pillow I have my clothes picked out and they're hanging on the door facing. And I went shopping yesterday, y'all. I hate shopping. I went into a Belks in Hendersonville and I hated it. Absolutely hated it. They didn't have anything I would be caught dead in. So I came home and I shopped out of my own closet. And I have, I have a... a a, a light blue you've seen pictures of me in this light blue outfit 
And so I went to my hairdresser to get my hair all cut and prettied up. Seems Tracy do a good job of it. I just love a new haircut. It just makes you feel so good. But they had some scarves there. Melanie, who owns the shop, had a display of scarves. And I got to looking at them and I'm thinking, oh, I could just add a scarf. So for 10 bucks, I added a scarf to my outfit and I'm good to go. 10 bucks. Oh, I don't have thin hair. I have really thick hair. She has to thin it because it's just, it's a lot of hair and it's a lot of heavy hair. So I'm shopping out of my own closet to get ready to, to wear, have something to wear. And cause it's springtime and I'm used to wearing heavy duty stuff with puppy around. So I've got the same shirt on I had yesterday. I had to take the roll, lint roller on it to make sure all the hair was off of it. Ugh, Cause I took it off to get my hair cut, but you never know how much is on you. And it, it makes me, ugh, I don't like hair. Ugh. But I got my little handy dandy control journal and I will, it probably needs to be updated because we no longer need a camera and we no longer need a video camera because we take them all with us and we're just, you know, it's, I just get it. Let me see what's on here. Makeup bag and stage makeup. So I have two different types of makeup and one's just everyday stuff and one's a little more covering, which makes me itch like crazy. Um, uh, an outfit to speak in my jewelry. I got to gather my jewelry up. I usually wear these earrings, but I usually put on a pretty necklace, but with the scarf, I might not need a necklace. But I need to put on um, my my travel cross. I always have a cross on when I travel. Uh, dress shoes. I'm going to wear my boots because they're comfy. And then um, I have to have tennis shoes for driving. Socks. Earplugs and my gown. And a change of clothes for to come home in. And I really don't have many clothes to take. Undies. And Hoochie Mama. Hoochie Mama is my good bra that I wear on stage. It's got a little more padding than my cotton bras. So I like to have I like to have Hoochie Mama because then the headlights don't shine, if you know what I mean. So I gotta have cheese sticks and water and some nuts and things and we're good to go. Just good to go. And this little thing goes with me because it's it's just my little travel control journal. But you could have a control journal just like this too. Just go to the store and, or get online and find you a little 4 by 6 photo album. And just make bullet points. They're backwards right there, but you can see there's numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's your, that's your morning routine. That's it. My medicine's together. Everything's good to go. So put together this little, um, I even have a control journal for my office bag. I call it my geek bag because it's got everything I need in it. And then um, I've got to find my makeup mirror though. And then um, I have a booth bat, uh, card that tells me what goes at the booth. So between those two things and my handy dandy packing control journal. Now, on our website, we have a section for control journals. And there is a free download of a travel control journal. I'm going to adjust this a little bit because I talk with my hands and you couldn't see my hands. You could only see my head. Uh, we have a packing control journal. Makes it easy. I started doing this many years ago. And you have like your toiletries bag. If it's a whole family's going, you put together a family toiletry bag. If it's just you and your husband, you each have your separate toiletry bag. And my toiletry bag stays packed, ready to go at all the time. So does my makeup bag. I, I don't take anything out of it except to update it and when I run out of stuff. And all I gotta do is grab it, throw it in the suitcase, and I'm good. And that makes it easy to 
get in the car and go spur of the moment stuff. It makes it a lot of fun too. I just want you to be less stressed. And if you can put together a list of the things you need, oh, we love to make lists, but if you can put together a list and put it in a little four, to, four by six control, little control journal, hey, that's one less thing you have to do. You guys just got to remember to look at the list and go through your checklist so you don't have to keep it all up here. It's on your checklist and to take a highlighter and mark it off. I just got through marking through, I mean, taking my silver rag to mark through everything. And I can't forget to take my feather duster. Did y'all see that great feather duster testimonial this morning I sent out? I couldn't wait to send it out. I just could not wait to send it out. So if you missed it this morning, go, go look at it. It went out about 10 o'clock this morning. So we have the packing control journal. We also have on our website for free an office control journal. And it's just a simplified version of your morning, afternoon, and evening routines. But it pertains, especially those of you who work from home, you put together a basic weekly plan. It's all good. And you're going to love it because it's free. Now, some announcements we have. I'm going to close to Richmond, Virginia. And if you look on our homepage at the event section, you'll see where I'm going. I don't know if you can still get in or not. And Miss Laura's in a class today, so um, I can't ask her. But hey, if you're there, I'll say hi to you. Even if you're out, it's at a big church. So if you're just in the parking lot and can't come in, it's, it's a benefit for Meg's Miles. And this was a young lady who, who died running. She's trying to get exercise. And this next month's habit is moving in May. And we need to, you know, get out and get some exercise. Go to the track and run. Stay off the streets. Stay off, you know, stay on the sidewalks. Um... Be smart. Take care of yourself. This poor lady was running and, you know, I don't know the details of the accident, but she was hit by a drunk driver at 8 o'clock in the morning. And she left two children and a husband and parents. And it's, it's just so sad. It's so sad. So let's be smart and take care of ourselves. Let's get some exercise Let's stay hydrated while we're, we're moving a little bit more these days. Let's stay hydrated because being dehydrated causes a lot of problems. Dizziness, when you're dizzy, you're not steady on your feet and you can fall. So let's get the water in our system. So we're leaving out at 8.30 in the morning. <clears throat> We've got to go about seven hours, but I stopped. And we're going to take our time getting there so we don't, you know, we're going to take the unbeaten path. I, I love going the back way, different places, because you get to see a lot of things. Let's, what's next? Oh, next week we are in zone five for one day. You can jump in on Sunday if you want to try to do a couple of things, but we're only in zone five for one day. And zone five is your living room. I got a head start on my living room this week because I did my cushions, getting detailed cleaning on, on my cushions. I even used my carpet sweeper on the cushions and it did a phenomenal job. It gets the worst of it off and then you, you can just take your, your rubber scrub and do the rest. Then um, the rest of the week we're in zone one. Well, my living room is in my entrance so the so. You walk into my house and you're in my living room. And then the front porch. My front porch is looking pretty good. I've got some plants to put out. And, you know, I like I like my front porch to be welcoming smell-wise. Got some lavender and some rosemary to go in some pots. And 
you know, you just start thinking about when it's clean already and we've just about taken all the wood, well, all the woods off of our wood racks, which sit on the front porch. And Robert will be putting those away this next week because we're not going to have any more fires this summer except for little, little, uh, little fires in the fireplace to get rid of paper, especially those pieces of paper. You're, I mean, I got a credit card application yesterday that had a check in it for $100,000. Well, I don't want anybody to get a hold of that check. So I burn all that stuff. And if you don't have a fireplace to burn that stuff in, build yourself. You go to Lowe's or Home Depot or the brick place and get some pavers that are curved and you can put together a nice little fire fire pit. Put some sand down in the bottom of it and you could get rid of a lot of paper. But you got to check with local fire department before you do any burning. You have to check all the time. So call them up and say, is it a good day to burn? That way you're responsible. You're taking care of things. You're not jumping in and doing something that could get out of hand. Always have water nearby to put the fire out. You know, you stretch your water hose out to where it is so that if you need to put something out, you can. Be prepared. That's, you know, that's the Girl Scout, Boy Scout motto. Be prepared. So we'll, we'll do all our zone stuff next week, getting our entrance, our front porch, and our dining room clean. Then uh, we're starting on May 1st, which is Tuesday. We're going to do the baby steps. And I may come on line every day and talk to you about the baby step of the day. Now, go on to our website. If you don't have my book, From Chaos to Clean in 31 Easy Baby Steps, get it. Get it ordered. It'll be to your house by one day next week, and you can jump in with us. The, the beauty of this book, it's all right between two covers. And we dropped the price this week on it to $15 so that we could we do something good for you. So we put together a great new package too. And that, that new package we're calling the Complete Fly Lady System. And we included it on, um, we, we included the carpet sweeper and our feather duster. Lovely feather duster. And those are two things that weren't in our complete system, weren't in our deluxe system. Right now, the, the deluxe mop, which Liz did a video of this week, is a special bargain. Just really special. We got a great price on it. We don't have many of them left. So if you want the extra large mop, let's see, where is it? I got it right here. I just have to shorten the handle down or I'll hit the camera. Here it is. And this one's dirty because I've been using it in here don't want to touch it either <laughs> but it's it's the extra large one here's a clean one this is the clean one it's bright blue and white it is not in the in the complete package but it's a really good price if you just want to mop and Liz can do it one-handed how many of you can mop one-handed with a baby on your hip We can do what we have to do when we need to do it. What do I want to talk about? Let's get some questions going. I don't have, have I got a, there's a Kleenex. I'll get a Kleenex right now. Let's get some questions. Liz will tag them so that I can see them. And we got a great testimonial this morning. Uh, Rebecca will probably be using it next week, but it was the most amazing testimonial. She says, where has the mold gone in my shower? I no longer have mold in my shower. She couldn't figure out why. And it's because she has routines now. When you're in the shower, 
you clean up after yourself. You can you can take the the rubber uh, the rubber sweeper has a squeegee on one side, and you can squeegee the shower down. And if you leave your shower curtain open and let the room dry for a few hours, then you can close the shower curtain or close the doors. But you got to get some airflow going, so mold won't grow. And her routines were keeping her keeping her shower clean. Okay, Francine says, how do you keep yourself motivated? Let me see if I can see the whole thing. I do well for a while and then I let it go. Well, you're just rebelling, honey. You're, you're, you're automatically thinking, well, I know more than Fly Lady. I can get this done. I don't need her. Well, that's okay if you're ready to walk away and you got your routines established. But if all of a sudden... Me not being in your face every few hours with an email and you forget about it because out of sight, out of mind, that's who we are. So, if you find yourself slipping away, grab your timer, set your timer, and before you know it, you can get stuff done. Play games with yourself all day long. Like today, I've been getting up every 15 minutes and doing two minutes to get ready to go on the trip. Two minutes. I'll go downstairs and fold clothes for two minutes. I'll gather up my toiletries, which are already gathered up. I have them in a specific place. And I'm putting, I'm staging everything. It's all on my, my dresser right across the room from me. As soon as I get off of this show today, I bet if I put 15 minutes into it, I can have my bags packed and in the car. Now, how cool is that? What is Robert's favorite fly lady cookbook? I don't have a cookbook of just my recipes. I never have had. Um, I have certain things that I cook. His favorite thing is curry. He loves chicken curry. And sometimes for his birthday, I'll cook that because I don't like the smell of it, but I'll cook it for him. But occasionally we'll go over to Asheville and, uh, there's a, a, a Chinese restaurant over there that has chicken curry that he absolutely adores. So Robert says it's better to have a wife that can cook but doesn't cook often than one that can't cook and cooks every day. So when I cook for him, he's happy, even if the recipe fails. And sometimes I take leftovers and throw together casseroles and he, he'll he eat what I put in front of him. Now, he doesn't like stewed okra. And we got a Chinese restaurant that has that on the menu because I crave that stuff for some reason, I guess. I just, just do. How do you stay on top of cleaning and schoolwork? I'm drowning dealing with a clinging toddler at the same time. I should not be answering this question. Liz should be answering this question because she has a clinging one-year-old. And when... When Gemma doesn't feel good, she only wants mommy to hold her. And it's it's really hard for her. But, you know, Liz does what she can. And a lot of things she does one-handed. She was putting dishes away the other night, one-handed. She goes down the stairs with the baby on her hip and one-handed, you know? So... You can do it. You just got to quit giving yourself excuses that you can't do it. A clingy baby just wants to be close to mommy. Put them close to mommy. If you can wear them on your back or on your side or in a sling, do it. The baby's going to feel better and so are you. Now, if you're going to do a lot of bending and stuff, put a bicycle helmet on that baby because I don't want you hitting its head. But let the baby cling. And if you can get the baby occupied with a toy or something for a little while, 
You can mop a floor in that room. That's exactly what Liz did the other day. Look at the old, look at the videos here. You can do this. You just got to quit giving in to your whining and excuses. That's it. Just say, I'm not going to whine about it. This has to be done. Play games with yourself. I found this the other day. And it, it's a piece of wood. And you put a ball bearing in it. You see, six, three, five, one, four, two. And you roll it around. And wherever it lands, it's, it's another way to play Fly Lady. Put a marble in it. It doesn't matter. It's a cute thing. You make a game of cleaning. Make a list of six things that need to be done or your morning routine. But you'd only start the auxiliary stuff of your morning routine after your bed is made, your shoes are on, you're dressed all the way, your hair is fixed. Then you can start doing the auxiliary stuff. I'm just... I, I have my routine written down let me let me see if i can find it in here morning routine office get up make bed switch and swipe get dressed to shoes Lo do a load of laundry a load a day keeps mount wash more away empty the dishwasher make copy make coffee fill up the water bottle eat breakfast and take my vitamins and then I can add doing the floors and, and feather dusting. And my house is going to look clean. Always. Always. Afternoon routine. Eat lunch. Reboot the laundry. Do the floors. Do a hot spot fire drill and feather dust. Evening routine. Where is the evening routine? I lost it. Probably because it's so automatic, I don't ever have to. It's underneath here. Let me see if I can pull it out. This is the most important routine of the day. Reboot the laundry. Last step in the laundry. Lay out your clothes for tomorrow. I like to take a bath at night. Clear off my hot spot. Here lately, I've been arranging the pillows on the couch and and taking my rub scrubber to wipe the couch down straighten the coffee table that makes the living room look good <clears throat> put glasses in the dishwasher not my eyeglasses any other glasses that are around brush my teeth wash my face turn off the computer and go to bed and last night i was in bed by 11:30, which is phenomenal for me it really is an amazing plan. But once the routines are established, and we do this over a period of a year, of practicing a habit until it becomes automatic and then stringing each month's habit into your routine. It's one thing after another. You just go bump, bump, bump. It's a dance to your day. Okay, next question. My office has become overwhelming with clutter. Should I hire an organizer? No. You won't be able to find anything if you bring them in. You got to get rid of the stuff you don't use. You got to donate things, the stuff you don't use, because it's that stuff that's taking up all your reasonable space. Now, According to what you do, I mean, you you need some you need some banker boxes. Banker boxes. I love banker boxes. They store flat until you need them, and then you put them together. And if you've got a lot of papers, then and you haven't done your taxes yet, you got to start sorting everything for 2017 into a box. And then you need a current year's box, 2018 box. We're into four months already. You could have four files of paid bills. You have personal bills. And if you're running a business out of your home, you have business bills. They're separate. Don't put them together. That's the bookkeeper in me. 
and you just start certain things and use the Ohio method. You get it? Only handle it once. Ohio. If you pick it up, process it. Is it a receipt? Is it something you need to keep because it, it's a birth certificate, a, a, a bill that needs to be paid? You know, put it where it belongs. Everything has a place, everything in its place. And if your desk is covered up, get three banker's boxes. Mark them left, right, center. Take everything off the left side of your desk and put it in the left box. Everything off the right side of your desk and put it in the right box. And everything off the center, put it in the center box. Then put back the things you need. Your stapler, um, your pen holder, pencil holder. Put those things back and make your desk look pretty. And then start processing a handful of everything that's in the left side. And then a handful from the right side. And eventually you get through all of it and you can clean out one drawer and do the same thing with one drawer so you have a place to put your files. And just process it. Set your timer for 15 minutes and do it. The reason it's piling up is because you've been procrastinating. You get through with the project and you leave it all laying out. I might get back to this someday. No, you won't. It just piles up and piles up and piles up. You clean things off the coffee table in the kitchen or in the living room and you throw it in your office and slam the door. It's like your master bedroom. It's the worst room in the house. Stop doing this to yourself. Make your room beautiful. Put something pretty on your desk so you won't want to mess it up. I don't even use a desk. I don't have a desk. I have an office in a bag and I have my chair. I have a little bookcase right beside me on my right and I have my hot spot and my where my water and stuff goes on my left. I don't even have a desk because I know me. As Michelle would say, I live with me every day. Okay, we've got another question. Okay, how... Okay, but how do I become comfortable with getting rid? How do you become comfortable getting rid of your stuff? You realize that it's taking you away from your family. Stuff, there's an acronym for stuff. Something that undermines family fun. When you got all this stuff around you, you don't have time to play with your kids. You don't have time to sit down in the floor and read them a book because that stuff is saying, you've been procrastinating about me. You don't have time to go play with them because you got to deal with me. Stuff is a house guest that needs to be evicted. Do you hear me? The stuff is ruining your family life. Let it go. Sing the Let It Go song at the top of your lungs. Put on the soundtrack to Frozen and sing Let It Go, Let It Go, Let It Go. Because letting it go, you're going to have places to put things. My grandmother always said everything has a place and everything in its place. And when you have, you know, we have two types of clutter. We have clutter that's on the surface. And then we have clutter that's in our storage places. Because it, we stuff things in those closets and in those cabinets and in those desk drawers. We stuff things in there so that our surfaces look clean. But then when those get so backed up with crap, you can't find anything. And then you have no place to put things except on the surface of your tables and your counters and your desk. And the floor starts piling up. 
So deal with it. Quit whining that you don't have time and deal with it. 15 minutes at a time. Because getting rid of the stuff is going to enable you to be who you were supposed to be. Okay, let's see what we've got here. We moved in our, we moved to our home in October. Uh, Boxes are unpacked except all the boxes for my husband's office and closet. So I have his boxes still sitting out and it's driving me crazy. Any ideas? Well, does he have an office? If he doesn't have an office yet, then where are you going to put them? Put them in where his office is supposed to be. If he doesn't have an office, then then he needs to find a place to, that's going to become his office. So you can ask him if you can be his organizer. We know how to organize. We don't need somebody to come in here and tell us how to do it. If we get rid of the clutter, now you can't, you can't evict his clutter, but you can't have him work with you to establish places for things. He may be just as overwhelmed as you are. And it, uh, Dr. Dave Ramsey is an amazing person to help you keep up with. He has a whole section on his website of what to keep and what to let go. So it, it's according to, see, you're finding the needle in the haystack to put a wedge between you and your husband because it's his boxes that hadn't been unpacked. Stop it. Let it go. It's not worth it. Put his office boxes in his office and let it go because that's your perfectionism. Okay, another question. My hubby likes to play video games. I open up a bag or a box and sit with him while... Okay. Yes, Miss Dave Ramsey is amazing. He is a sweet man, too. I know people that work for him, and they are good people. They are real good people. So, no more questions? Oh, there's one. What if you spent dollars, oh, well, this will be a good one. What if you spent dollars on stuff that you know should go, but you still have a hard time? Well, you're feeling guilty. You got to let go of the guilt too. Yes, you spent dollars on that, but if you're not loving it and you don't have a place for it and you don't use it, it's clutter. It is clutter. Bless someone else with it donate it, put it by the side of the road and put a free sign on it. Because if you hold on to it and try to sell it in a yard sale to recoup 25 cents on the dollar or 10 cents on the dollar, you're going to feel even worse. So let the stuff go. Take it to goodwill. Give it to somebody else. It will retain its value when you bless someone else with it. It really works that way. And if it has a bad memory for you, if you give it away, you're going to give it a new memory of some of you blessing someone else with the stuff. Let it go. Forgive yourself for spending the money. Forgive yourself. It's going to make a big difference in your ability to let go of things. And I think when we, we have to teach our children this too. If you just go into your child's room and get rid of all their toys, they're going to be clingy because you have, um, you've taken their stuff. But if you go in there and you say, we've got some children at church that don't have anything and do you have some toys you could bless them with and maybe that you could work together on stuff that they've outgrown 
And this way you're teaching them how to give and how to love others. And you're teaching them how to be giving adults and how to teach their children how to help others. You got an opportunity here. But if you're holding on to your stuff, that's what your children are seeing. So let it go. I need to do a whole show on let it go. I love the Fly Lady tools. Um, which one do you recommend the most? <clears throat> well, they all are fun. I kind of love the, the purple, silver, or bronze rags. I use them all the time. And it, it helps to have a good supply of them because then when I get a load, I can do a whole laundry because you can only wash these with themselves and with the chenille mop cloth. I love my feather duster. This thing makes me happy. It has made me happy for many years. I have one of every one we've ever sold because I keep them. They look beautiful in my umbrella stand. So I love my feather duster. Um, it makes dusting fast and fun and you feel pretty good doing it. The mops we developed because I tried every mop on the market and I, I didn't have one that I loved. And I said, we've got to come up with a mop that is that, that works well. And then we finally got the chenille mop cloths with the fingers and this thing this is our regular sized one. It's got, it's red and blue. And it is amazing because I wet it and run over the floors with it pretty fast. Unless I feel a rough spot, which means there's something caked on right there. Don't want to know what that is. And then I had keep a supply of them. And sometimes I wet three at a time and I'll do my floors with three of them. It, it is, it's a wonderful tool. And another tool that I absolutely love that I developed many years ago, I bought the first one from, um, I think it was Eddie Bauer. It was a notebook cover. This is the purple one. We are out of purple at this moment. But it is a notebook cover. It doesn't even come with a three ring binder in it because we all have them at home. We've all got these three ring binders. It's a one inch three ring binder and you can get them at Office Depot or wherever for a dollar. So we didn't include that um, unless you live in Europe and we, we, can give, we can get you one of ours because their three ring binders are different from ours. But it fits. It has a place for everything you need in here. This is an office in a bag. And it has a little handle on the back. Doesn't take up a lot of room, so it'll still lie flat on your kitchen counter. People put their control journals in here. They put their control journals in here. And it's just a great tool. I mean, I used to keep my checkbook in here. That's what I got it for, to pay my bills. All, a whole year's worth of bills would go in a folder right here. I kept them sorted and clicked to, clipped together with paper clips. You have all your tools and things and a little zippered pouts for pens and stuff. This works. And I, I keep one for, I keep a red one for an emergency control journal that has copies of things that you need in case uh, of uh, you get evacuated or you have a house fire, which we've had one of those, and you grab your stuff and you go. You grab it and go. Sometimes you've got five minutes till you're evacuated. It's all in here. And it's red and it's easy to find. I also use this for my holiday control journal. But I use a red one for that too. And it stays with my cookbook because nobody ever looked there for it. And it's got recipes and things and things that I like to cook during the holidays. So those are my three favorite, fourth favorite 
the rags, any color. I love them all. The mop, love it. Feather duster, office in a bag. But the rub, rubber scrubber was our first rubber tool. I have a place in my heart for all of them. I wouldn't have them if I didn't use them. I wouldn't have them in the fly shop. They would all go away. And when you buy things from the fly shop, you support our team. I mean, we live in America. It's, we live in a capitalist society. We sell a product. We give a product away for free every day. So we sell a product, we make a profit, and it pays the bills. It pays the people that help me to help you. And I appreciate every one of you that purchase something. Now, if you can't afford to purchase some, I appreciate you too. Because you usually are our biggest cheerleader and you tell everybody you know about Fly Lady. So my goal this next year is to help a lot of people. We have a new book coming out. And she told me last night that the new book would probably be out in December. I can't wait. I just can't wait. You're going to love it. You're going to love it. It's all new stuff written. And it's still on the same, same principles except maybe for people that don't know how to do certain things because they hadn't been taught. And I want you to know how to keep your house clean. Because we all deserve to live in a house that blesses us and blesses our family. It's our sanctuary. It needs to be a loving, warm, inviting place for you and your family. And your kids' friends and your, your parents and your sisters and brothers. It, it's your home. It's part of you. Okay, next question. I'm a mama of three kids. I really struggle with self-care and putting myself first. Any suggestions on how or what to start with and stick with it? Well, the main, what to start with is going to bed at a decent hour, drinking your water, and eating properly. Sit down and eat slower. This is the pot calling the kettle black. I'm telling you, I eat fast. I know that. But I don't eat off my children's plates anymore because I don't have any kids at home. Take care of yourself by getting your rest, drinking your water, and eating properly. That's the beginning. Next month, when May rolls around, we're going to start moving a little more. And I'm going to be right there with you. I got to get my bottom up and move too. I really have to do this. I'm going to work toward 5,000 steps a day. That's, that's my goal, but I'm, I don't like goals because I usually blow them off, but I'm going to consistently get dressed and ready to move, ready to move. And when you got three little kids, getting enough sleep is the, is the big deal. So get your, get your rest and you're going to have more energy to do things. Like last night I was talking to Liz and she says, I'm sorry, I got to go to bed. And it was 8.30. Kids were asleep. She says, I got to go to bed. And one night last week, she got 10 hours of sleep and I was so proud of her. If you can get 8 to 10 hours of sleep, you are doing well. Now, take care of yourself. All I'm asking, I'm not asking for 30 days of exercise. I'm asking for 15 minutes. That's it. Just 15 minutes. My 15-year-old brother lives with me. And he is terrible about picking up. I've asked him to keep the sink clean 
and left a rag, rag bite to make it easier. I shine it at night and the next morning there's grime water spots when I wake up. I can't see any more of it. Anyway, if he puts his dishes in the kitchen, you need to praise him. You got to quit nagging. I don't know why your 15-year-old brother lives with you, but there's probably been some trauma in his little life. So, and it's in your life too. Now, 15-year-old boys, I got a 15-year-old grandson. They are stubborn and they want it to be their idea. We have on our website a control journal for kids. We also have one for older kids. It's called a, co a, a college student control journal. And it deals with dorm rooms and stuff. But if you treat his room as if it were a dorm room and, you know, collect, ask him to, you know, collect his stuff and put it in his room, you, his room could be off limits to you and you could let it be just like it was. But maybe tell him about the control journal and it might help. Because it's me talking to him, not you nagging him. Because all he's hearing is wah, 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 wah. Don't be that kind of mother figure to your 15-year-old brother. Don't do that. Because you're not his mother. You're his sister. And you're in this together. Work together. Show him the control journal. Quit being a nag. And be thankful that he brings stuff into the kitchen. And what's it take you, 15 seconds to clean up after it? Don't allow your perfectionism to ruin your relationship with your brother or your 15-year-old child or your 13-year-old daughter. Praise them when they do something good. Okay, next question. I am taking a week off work to declutter. Do you have a jump start plan? Well, Elaine, I wouldn't recommend doing that. You are wasting a week of vacation to deal with clutter. All I ask you to do is deal with clutter 15 minutes a day. Just 15 minutes. Tulip, don't you chew my microphone. Don't chew my microphone. She's got, she wants it really bad. I'm going to get it from her. Yep, I got it. I don't want you to take off a week of vacation to declutter your house. You know, you could do crisis cleaning. 15 minutes on a Saturday. Do 15 minutes in the living room, 15 minutes in the kitchen, 15 minutes in the main bathroom. Don't waste your vacation time on decluttering your house. It breaks my heart for your family. And for you, you need to be at the beach somewhere having fun. Not messing and gumming, that's what my granny would say, with clutter. Stop it. Don't take off work to declutter. That's just... All I'm asking is 15 minutes a day. How is that hard? Every time you go to the car, take a bag to donate to Goodwill. Don't ruin time off with your family to mess with clutter. It's killing you. Whew. I'll take one more question because that didn't upset me. How do I get a six-year-old to clean? I can't get to clean her room. I've cleaned it for her, and by Friday, it's destroyed. It's because she doesn't have any routines, and she's she's not being praised. She's being nagged on. Children will work harder for praise, and think about it. We have um, on our website, in a control journals, it's called the Camp Gonna Wanna Fly Control Journal. Sit down and have a family meeting 
and give prizes for the cleanest room. Maybe it's tickets to the movie. Maybe it's the the newest video that's coming. My granddaughter loves um, The Greatest Showman on Earth, and she got that video as a reward the other day when it got when it came out. There's a little show that she likes to watch too. There are ways to reward your children to get things done and brag on them. That that camp gonna want to fly a control journal is wonderful because if you go to camp you got to keep your bed made you got to pick up your stuff in your room each cabin is going to get judged and people have to work together so utilize the stuff they like to do they like a little competition maybe her big brother's not as clean and you got to sit down and figure out what it is they would like to have as a reward and use that to get their attention it's just that easy. And have their routines written out in a little control journal. Put it up on a sheet of paper. Let them figure out what their routines are. Give them the foundation and work with them. I know that you don't believe me. But my house used to be piled high. You couldn't walk in our house. Because when Robert and I got married, I had a house full of clutter because I had walked away from a 17-year marriage with nothing. I had the clothes on my back, my car, a goose-down comforter, and my stereo. And when you have nothing, you you hoard things. And I realized that's what I was doing. Getting rid of stuff freed me, freed me to be fly late. Because if I still had all that stuff, and I have stuff, don't get me wrong. I stay on top of my stuff though, and I declutter something every day. I found my life's calling. And if God called me home tonight, I know I've done what he put me here to do because I got rid of my clutter and I didn't do it so that I felt, and I'm going to say the word because I don't know how else to say it because when somebody does this to you, you have been violated. You, when you take clutter away so fast that you feel raped, that you feel like you have been violated in some terrible fashion because clutter was just ripped out of your life, that's a hole that you keep trying to fill with more stuff. So you've got to gradually get it out of your house. And when you do it in a slow fashion, it means that you're not as violated. You're blessing others with this stuff. You're you're getting it out of your house so you can live. And you're giving somebody who doesn't have a lot things that they need because you have two or three things just like. I know one time we got a testimonial from a lady who found seven pairs of scissors in her home when she decluttered. Because every time she lost a pair of scissors in her clutter, she went out and bought another one. Now, I probably have seven pairs of scissors. I have sewing scissors. I have paper scissors. I have kitchen scissors. I have a pair of scissors by my chair. Robert has a pair of scissors by his chair. So we have scissors. But they're all in their place. They all have specific places. And they all have specific uses. Please get rid of your clutter. Don't take off a week of work to do it. 15 minutes a day. 5 minutes in the morning. 5 minutes in the afternoon. 5 minutes in the evening. Run around your house and gather up. 
27 items to give away and then gather up 27 items to throw away. And before you know it, your house is going to be beautiful. Your home is a reflection of you. Let go of the clutter that is holding you back from finding your purpose in life. I know you can do it. If I did it, anybody can. Keep Laura and I in your thoughts and prayers as we travel tomorrow. We will leave at 8.30 in the morning and we're headed up toward Richmond from Brevard, North Carolina. Y'all have a great day. What's for dinner? Start thinking about it right now. We're going to have date night tonight because we're not, I'm not going to be home for date night tomorrow night. So we're going to go somewhere nice for dinner tonight. Y'all have a good day weekend and Tuesday I'll be back on here we're going to talk about the baby steps get the book and we are just going to enjoy the whole process I love you all we have a new tool and that new tool is um, our fly lady express for those of you who don't like all my emails for four ninety nine a month, and then you take a dollar off with a coupon code, you can you can get one email a day, one email a day. Oh, that sounds good, Liz. I'm uh, my sister Dana just asked how long I was going to be in Richmond. I'm not going to be in Richmond long. Uh, I speak on Saturday at noon, or I speak in the morning, and then we have a luncheon. And then sometime later on that afternoon, we will head back home. I love you all. I will see you later on Tuesday. You can do this. You really can. It's worth 15 minutes a day. That's all I'm asking. Put on those lace-up shoes and do it. I love you. I like those hearts coming across. <laughs>